All right, good news. We got the uh, 1.65 Scorpion Roller Rockers today. Uh, pretty happy with them. I took them out of the box, cleaned them up, checked them out. Um, look pretty good. I haven't used this particular one. I do use the uh, Scorpion, same rockers, the 1.6s for a small block forward, and I've had pretty good luck with those. For the price, they're hard to beat. So I'm going to try out the 1.65s on this small block Chevy 406 project. That's kind of what I'm doing tonight is I set two of them up and used my push rod length checker to get me in the ballpark of where I needed to be push rod length wise. And then I always keep probably about six different lengths of push rods around for checking stuff like this. And what I ended up finding is the 7425 push rods that I had are gonna work perfect. Now I only had a few of them, so I'm gonna order a full set, but I'll show you guys uh, quickly kinda how I came up with that number and how I go about it. So if you look closely, and I better explain this a little better, what I'm looking for is this roller tip to be at the center of that valve tip. Now what you're gonna find is as the rocker opens and closes, it's going to move forward and back. So what I like to do is set it up for it's a little bit on the back side. And then as it opens, it naturally goes towards the front side. So you're trying to keep your pattern in the center as much as possible. You're never, well, you're very, very, very rarely ever going to have it just always perfectly centered. Um, it'd be like a real low lift cam might, but something with, you know, this is like 615 lift. It's always going to start towards the back and move towards the front, but you don't want it going too far forward or too far backwards. You kind of want to be the same distance backwards as you are forward. And that's exactly what I came up with this 7425 put me at. And what I'm talking about is when it's all the way closed, I'm about, I mean, it's hard to say with my fingertip, there. And when I'm all the way open, I'm about there. It's the exact same distance backwards as forward. So about, you know, half lift, we're right in the middle of that. So that's about perfect in my mind. How I do it is use paint or grease on the tip of the roller and on the tip of the valve and then when you open it and close it with your valves adjusted you can then pull these rockers off and check where your pattern is because it'll leave a track pattern on the tip of the valve and on the tip of the roller it's really just the tip of the valve that really matters as far as what you're looking at but some other things to keep in mind is I'll show you guys this real quick And I got a few different points to look at. How much thread you have with the length of the push rod. As you increase or decrease, you're going to have more or less thread showing on your stud. So you can see I've got oh, probably just over a half inch, almost three quarters of an inch of thread. And if you look how much thread we have there, that's, that's perfect. That's exactly where I want to be. Now, the other thing you want to look at is the distance between your spring retainer and the valve or the uh, rocker arm. You want to make sure you're not coming into any interference there. And if you look, you can tell we're a little bit tight, but we've got about 30 to 40 thousandths at the tightest point in any direction. So that's, that's perfect. What I'm talking about there... Is right back in here where this is cut back you want to make sure and I can show you here on this one without a push rod you want to make sure you're not running into interference like that you can see how like, that's you know really obvious there but in an instance like that and then the other distances we're talking about is you want to make sure it's not way up on the stud something like that because now you don't have enough thread 
So quite a few different things to look at when you're checking push rod length. You want it to be somewhere right in the middle where you're centered on your valve, you're good on your threads, and your good clearance here. So a few different points, and like I said, I kind of lucked out having a 7425 on hand and having that work out pretty well. This particular combination I knew was going to require a little bit of playing around because I've got these Howard's roller rockers, I'm sorry, Howard's roller lifters. They're plus 300 thousandths. We got an 80 thousandths head gasket, aftermarket cylinder heads, a block that's been decked. I mean, we've got every factor here that's different than factory. So a lot of guys will say, you know, like plus 100 or minus 100 or plus 200 thousandths. <sighs> that doesn't mean nothing to me. You just need to start from scratch. Um, each combination is a little bit different. So I kind of came out here tonight, like I do in any of these, with no particular number in my head. You just got to look at what you have, and it's going to tell you with the track pattern, the stud, the clearance, and the rocker height, where your push rod length is going to be. Um, you can't recommend a rocker or a push rod length per combination like this. Some of the LS stuff, I get it. It's been done a bunch. So if your heads are milled 10 thousandths and you're using a bunch of factory stuff, there's other guys that have done that with that same cam. Those instances, you can get pretty close. But in my mind, you should always check it and never just go off of a number. So, yeah, that's what we came out with tonight. And uh, I'm going to continue working on this, get these push rods ordered up. And uh, hopefully that helps you guys on that. I know it's kind of a lot of information to follow, but the overall takeaway is get a push rod length checker, take your time, make sure you track your pattern, and just kind of look at all the signs of the stud length and, and your clearance. But yeah, here's these rockers, and I'm real happy with them. I'm sure some would be asking kind of why I went with a 1.65 ratio. Um, factory is a 1.5 ratio. This is a 1.65 ratio. The reason is, is to get more lift. Um, the cylinder heads, these particular ones, flow really well. Um, all the way up to 650, honestly, they flow really well, all the way up to 700 lift. Well, a 1.65 rocker gets me 615 lift. That's perfect for my springs. That's perfect for the cylinder heads. That's perfect for my piston to valve clearance. Um, so that gained me like 17 thousandths over a 1.6 rocker, um, which was roughly, I'm just going to throw a number out, like 48 thousandths more than a 1.5 rocker lift wise. So that's why. Um, it's free horsepower. When your cylinder heads will flow it, and these ones do, and you have all the clearance, why would you not go with a higher ratio rocker is really the question you should ask yourself, um, in my opinion. This particular combination will work out great. Um, other people say, well, hey, why didn't you just get a cam that was 615 lift with a 1.5 ratio rocker, which you could do, but the reason why I didn't do that is because rod clearance in the cam tunnel um, you can get pretty close on something with a larger stroke like this, so I took that factor completely away with doing it this way and gave myself much more clearance in that area. So, yeah, there is a uh, method to my madness, <laughs> and uh, hopefully this helps some guys. All right, thanks.